I think one of the challenges about being a radical church is often we have to sacrifice what have become sort of holy cows in our Christian world. And uh, there can be this thing of, well, we've always done it this way, uh, or we tried that once, it never worked, or I've been in this church 40 years and we've never done it any other. That just has to be killed, to be uh, perfectly honest, uh, because it's not biblical, it's, it's traditions of men. It may have even had the Spirit of God burning in it when it was first done, but the Spirit of God's moved on. And if it's, if it's something that's not biblical, but is not a biblical precedent that, that has longevity for time eternal, if it's something that's just a practice that we developed that was fruitful in a bygone age, well, let it be in a bygone age. Let's actually get to ram, to back to the principles of what is biblical and build from there. Now, the cost comes when you start dealing with some of that because people are very precious about things that have been precious to them in their life, naturally. Things they associate with their own personal walk with Christ. If you say, well, that's not relevant now to this generation, let's get rid of it. That's a huge challenge. And I have to say that my observation from being in church leadership for over 30 years now is sometimes it's possible to renew a church structure to be suitable for purpose now. Sometimes it is, and some people are very gifted and graced to do that. At other times, it's just best to plant another church. And rather than dismantle that which is precious to other people and they haven't got faith to dismantle, well, bless them in what they're doing, but then start something new that then can have a wineskin more appropriate to what God is doing now. That's quite a costly thing. It's quite a controversial thing, what I'm saying, because people say, well, are you not promoting disunity? Are you not promoting church splits? That's not the heart behind it. But the heart behind it is sometimes structures of man can hinder the very flow of the Holy Spirit. Every time you read in church history of revival, you always find that it was opposed when it started. And it wasn't opposed by the unbelievers, it was opposed by the church because it didn't fit the mold. Some people either thought it was of the devil or it didn't fit or it wasn't right or it wasn't how they'd done it before. So being radical, when we pray, God, will you give us revival? That's gonna be very messy and it will cause a lot of offense uh, it will cause a lot of disruption. It will cause people, because we all have in our minds what we think revival is going to look like. When it comes, it's never like we think it's going to be. So there's a huge cost, and we have to be prepared. If we really want to see Europe ablaze with the Spirit of God, with very healthy local church life, it's going to mean killing some sacred cows. Mm -hmm.